why do men go silent? Okay, why men go silent? The great Buddha always taught, he said that this, to eliminate all suffering, meditate. And in meditation, go into a place of silence and not thinking. If you're not thinking about problems, then you're at peace. So that was primarily taught to men. Women in India were not doing a lot of meditation. They were doing devotion, heartfelt activities, service with love, feeling grace, positivity, where men were taught, forget your problems, forget negativity, go into a state of deep meditation. Now, things have changed since then, but the idea there is primarily it was taught to men because the tendency in the man's brain is to stay in one part of the brain or another part of the brain. Women's brains have way more connective tissue, the connective tissue, way more, it's called white matter, and women have way more, eight times more, and that connects everything together. So when a woman's listening, literally, the li this, a part of the brain lights up here, a part of the brain lights up here, part of the brain lights up back there, goes on the other side of the brain, she can listen from there and listen from there. When a man's listening, one part of the brain lights up. When he speaks, another part of the brain lights up. If he's turned on, another part of his brain lights up. If he feels love, another part of his brain lights up. <laughs> so men can easily have sex without love. But the greatness of what men can learn to do is only, only have sex with someone you love. And that means for men, I, I teach men how to keep their testosterone up. Stop masturbating or doing porn. When you do that, it lowers your testosterone. We now have, we, we now have, we now have the uh, scientific evidence that when you have sex, when you ejaculate more than once a week, your testosterone levels will get lower and lower and lower. Now, what it means to have low testosterone for a man is that means he can't be turned on to a woman he cares about. Because if you care about her, estrogen goes up and pushes testosterone down. To care about a woman and desire her, you have to have higher testosterone. So if you have low testosterone, then going online and having sex with a stranger or fantasy, complete fantasy, that stimulates high dopamine levels and it becomes addictive, but it also gives you a brief moment of high testosterone and then it always goes down lower again. So this is like men don't know this. And so often when women have sex with a guy before he bonds with her, he's, his testosterone goes up when he has sex, then he ejaculates, testosterone goes down. And when testosterone goes down, there's an automatic reaction in a man's body. He cannot control this, it's automatic. If testosterone drops, he, his body withdraws from anything producing intimacy, anything that produces estrogen. He literally pulls away. That's why guys tend to roll over and go to sleep or they slowly move away after the orgasms that, that he literally has to recover by pulling away. And too much connection causes too much pulling away. But if he connects first mentally, then emotionally, then when he pulls away physically, he's still bonded to you emotionally and mentally. So that's what your key is, is going slow to get the bonding. And uh, he would then be able to pull away. And I talk about that in my book, Men Are From Mars. He's like a rubber band. He pulls away, then he will spring back. But when he pulls away, if women don't understand men, they can't trust. And so they run after him, try to get him to come back to her. And that's people pleasing or asking him questions or what's the matter, or let's talk about the relationship. Or she gets mad at him and, pulls, and doesn't run after him. Then he comes back and she slaps his hand, bad. So then he learns, <laughs> don't, don't go back to her. She just slapped your hands. And I can't tell you how many men after they've had sex with a woman, maybe a few weeks later, he starts thinking about her again as his testosterone goes up. And he thinks I'll give her a call, but he doesn't call because he's so afraid that she's going to slap his hand because that's what happens when men are too quick to, when men have low testosterone, they can't sustain connection for a very long time. They dip in, they go out, they dip in, they go out. And so that they can't sustain the relationship. What, what other thing with that one is, yes. is, uh, Perfect. Harvard did a study on men and women and they told them to relax and women sat down on a couch and women relaxed and their brain activity sped up. And you ask them, what are they, what are they thinking? They're saying, I'm thinking about all the things I should be doing that I'm not doing while I'm sitting in this chair trying to relax. <laughs> and that's women. Men in the study, what they found is the neuron activity dramatically stopped. Literally low activity in the brain automatically just having him sit there. And if you ask him, what are you thinking about? He'll say nothing because he really is thinking about nothing. 
Now, the problem today, I have to say, we have new problems, which is why I've written this book, Beyond Mars and Venus, because as women are more masculine and men are more feminine, we have new problems uh, in order to improve communication to find balance of our masculine and feminine. And uh, so men often, instead of pulling away, they feel guilty for pulling away. It's mm -hmm. like, you shouldn't disconnect because it does hurt women's feelings if, if uh, she doesn't understand that he's not hurting her feelings. It's her belief that he's not loving her and he should be loving her all the time. He needs this time to come back. That's when she should get a life. One woman said to me, well, if he gets to pull away, what am I supposed to do? He gets to do what he wants and I don't get to do what I want. I say, come on, when he pulls away, you can do whatever you want. Get a life. You know, you shouldn't be so needy on a man. It would just push him away. Mm -hmm. you, you need to be like contained, happy, fulfilled within yourself. And you also have to be aware that I need what a man can give me. Mm -hmm. A lot of women who've learned to be more independent, they go, I don't need a man. Well, you really don't need a man, but what you need is what a man can give you. You need affection. You need acceptance. You need understanding. You need intimacy and you need great sex. You know, women who are having great sex look radiant and they don't have wrinkles, you know, they, or at least they have less. <laughs> they stay vibrant. Uh, this is a possibility. Physical intimacy is the real thing. This is what's possible for us today. If we learn how to balance these hormones where women are too masculine, balance the masculine with your feminine, with new relationship skills. And for women, for men, don't be so needy, you know, go, go be more independent. Don't depend on her for her happiness, only depend on her to become happier. See, you, you have to be your self-sufficiency. You can't be so weak and needy. You are actually weak when you go too far to your female side. Your power, and the power, what I mean by is confidence, strength, motivation, finish the job, get it done, get up and do it. That's power. Serve others, be selfless. Don't get upset about stuff. This is what men need training on. And the younger generation, oh my gosh, they're missing that. One is Half of the boys don't have fathers, so they don't learn how to find, find masculinity. And two, as many of the fathers haven't learned how to be masculine in the presence of women who are very masculine. So what happens is when women complain, men just complain back. But when men complain, their estrogen levels are going up and they can get all argumentative. What men don't realize is that when, you ang when you're angry, estrogen levels are going up and testosterone's going down. That's a whole new revelation. They didn't know, nobody, that's only new knowledge on the planet when now that we're measuring hormones and everything, we can see testosterone is the good hormone for men. Whenever a man is stressed, angry, upset, depressed, anxious, or has a heart attack, his testosterone is extremely low. The reason they don't tell you testosterone, low testosterone causes heart attacks in men, the reason they don't tell you that is because giving a man testosterone doesn't do anything. He's got to make it. If you're making testosterone, your stress levels are low you're functioning from full potential and you're growing in potential. That's testosterone for men. We need 10 to 20 times more. Women need 10 to 20 times more estrogen at, than a man, than a man. And whenever a woman is stressed, her estrogen is way too low. And it's so it's simple logic. What are the things that help create estrogen for women? What are the things that create testosterone for men? And why do men become silent? Is men need sometimes to disconnect when they feel adrenaline response or a cortisol response. An adrenaline response, let's just say you're talking to him and he's trying to think, why is she saying that? Because it seems like he's being criticized in some way or he's supposed to do something. He doesn't know what he did wrong or what I'm supposed to do about it or whatever. Anytime a man feels a little stressed, the first thing that happens, he produces adrenaline and adrenaline causes him to detach from estrogen. It gives him more testosterone. So he tends to disconnect and a woman who's talking to him, she'll feel that right away. He doesn't notice a difference, but she feels it right away. He's pulled away. He's not talking. What's the matter? And, and that's disturbing because she thinks like a woman would think if another woman pulled away, if another woman pulled away, generally it's because she's mad at you and she doesn't trust you and you pushed her button. But for a man, you could, you could be upset with you when he pulled away. But most of the time, men just simply thinking about something, he will detach from his emotions to have more testosterone and clarity and energy. Then if he doesn't uh, solve his problem that he's figuring out, then he becomes more emotional and he gets angry and his estrogen levels start to increase. Or he feels defensive and argues, and that's a form of fear, which is estrogens going up. So our challenge today is men are too far on their feminine, women are too far on their masculine. Let's use these skills to come back into balance. So one thing a woman can do on a practical note, when a man stops talking, he's thinking. 
or he's just mulling it over. Mulling it over is kind of a nonverbal thinking as opposed to women, you could feel, but you don't really have words for it yet. Well, men are thinking, but they don't actually have words for it. They're mulling it over. And really what's happening is body is his body is disconnecting from emotions in order to think clearly. And, and that's what's going on. That's why he stops talking. And what you can do, so you don't panic when he stops talking. Sometimes he just disconnects. You're talking to him and he just sort of pulls away. Just pause. Don't talk more at that moment. Just pause and say, you're thinking about it, right? And he'll say, yeah, I'm thinking about it. And just stop talking. Just wait till he comes back to you. That's the whole thing. When men pull away, don't go after him. Stay where you are. He will come to you. Good wisdom. This is so true. Like every time when I ask my husband a question, it sometimes may take a minute or so, but then it's like the most brilliant wisdom or insights are going to coming out of his mouth. Oh, you're a good wife. I have to say what a beautiful wife you are. You oh. know, when it comes, when it comes to men, if your wife feels that you're brilliant, you're already ahead of all the other men in the world. You know, other men can be more successful. They can uh, have more money. They can be more powerful. They can be more talented. But a man who comes up to a wife who thinks he's brilliant, he's got a, he's ahead of all of them. Because that's it's the love, a woman's love. And there's different kinds of love. There's the kind of love that says, oh, you're like, a, let me take care of you. You need my help. That's what That's caring, consideration, understanding, respect. When I do that to a woman, her estrogen goes up. When she does that to me, my estrogen goes up. Do I need more estrogen? No. What I need is more testosterone. So what stimulates testosterone? Here's a few practice things women can try today. A man's talking when he pauses, say something like, that makes sense. Or say, what a good idea. Or say, wow, you're right. Uh, another one is, you're my hero. I'm so glad you're here. All these things say he makes a difference. That pumps up testosterone when he feels appreciated, when he feels no complaints, acceptance, and when he feels that you can ask for him for help in small increments. And when he does it, you appreciate it. That means you trust him. You can depend on him. So many women lose the support of their husbands because they depend on him and he doesn't always follow through. So then they remember that and they have negative thinking. They go, I'll just do it myself. I'll do it myself. Anytime you're doing it yourself, you're on your male side. And nothing wrong with being on your male side. That's because when he's not there, you can do it yourself. Thank goodness you can do it yourself. And next time, ask him for help. You got to come back to your female side. Otherwise, what's the point of being in a relationship? And because women don't know the point of being in a relationship, many women are not in relationships. They're not aware of what they need. You see, right now, so many people are going to the hospital and they're sick. And everybody who goes to the hospital sick from an infection actually has vitamin D levels that are extremely low. Every person has extremely low vitamin D. That's what makes your immune system work and other good things. It's about 17 and below if you go to a hospital and you stay there. If you don't have any symptoms at all and you get a viral infection and you don't have any symptoms at all, in those cases, your vitamin D is always 31 and above. Now mine's 50 or 60, sometimes 70. This is like normal healthy. So I'll never go to a hospital, never need to go to a hospital because I have healthy vitamin D levels. So I know what I need so I can get it. If men and women really understood what they need, they could get it today. Everything you need is always available to you. It's when you want things that you don't need. We're a consumer society. We just buy all this stuff. We don't really need it. We're off balance all the time. We eat foods that we don't need. We eat junk foods that we don't need. That's where we're all a little mentally ill, injured. And what happens is we're addicted to bad stuff because good stuff isn't addictive. It just feels good. But suddenly bad stuff comes along like complaining. Complaining produces huge amounts of dopamine and then your brain gets addicted to complaining. The major addiction for men is masturbation and porn. Uh, you're basically massively addictive. If you actually make love with a woman you love and she loves you and you truly bond, Actually, the man's body produces di different chemicals. His body produces something called prolactin that frees him from the addiction to sex. You see, and nature intended for men who have sex with women and make babies for the men to stay around. But if a man masturbates, he loses all his prolactin and he has an addiction to sex. So men are basically addicted to find a woman, but not to have sex until she says, oh, I feel really safe and I can really love him. He's seen me, he hears me, he's there for me. Then when a man has sex with you, his body makes prolactin and that frees him from this addictive craving that men have for sex. 
So yes, there's a monkey part of us that's addicted to sex, but it's also violent and it's all these things. Men are not that, unless you're the man monkey. If you're a real man, you learn how to control those things. You control your violent nature. You also control your sexual nature to elevate it to love. And that's what we're hoping to do in the world. And that's why people are interested in relationships today. And we're living in a new society where our emotional needs are no longer suppressed. They're very up there. And we have to learn how to fulfill our emotional needs, not just survival and security, but our emotional needs. And that's a whole new language. It's a whole new awareness. We can't expect our partners to know it. We have to learn it first.